How's it going, statistics? Today we're going to be taking a look once again at the chi-square distribution. And this time we're going to be the chi-square goodness of fit. Let's check it out over here on the next screen. Today we're going to try to formalize the process, the four-step uh, four step plan here for a chi-square test of goodness of fit. So we're going to just take a look at the values from yesterday. Our observed values were uh, 11, 22, 16, 14, 12, and 11. Now, if you were watching yesterday's video, you probably noticed that I got one of these values wrong. I think I just typed it incorrectly, but this 11.2 for Brown should have been there. And so the chi-square test statistic that we got here was 12.018. So let's take a look at how to do this on the calculator. First things first, get yourself into an empty list by clicking stat and then number one, edit. And then you're going to put all your observed values in L1. Once you have your observed values in L1, you can go ahead and put your expected values in L2. Now a shortcut to this, if you want to call this a shortcut, is to go ahead and highlight list 2 and then type in 86, which is our total number of M&Ms here. And we're going to multiply by a second parenthesis gives you these curly braces. And then now we're going to type in the distribution. And point 0.13 to close it off. And then parenthesis, or brace, second parenthesis. And that will put the distribution over here. Um, and I don't, you can keep this distribution the way it is, or you can round this to any specificity you want. Since we are using one decimal place, I'm going to round this to one decimal place. And if you haven't figured out how to do that, if I want to round the entire list L2, I'm going to highlight L2 and I'll push math number round. And the numbers that I run around that I want to round are the list two numbers, comma, and I want one number after the decimal, so to the tenth place. That's going to take all those values and automatically round it. There we go. So now we have that, and we're ready to calculate the chi-square test statistic. Here on the home screen, we want to add lists together. So the function for that is second stat math and then sum. So what do we want to sum? We'll put a fraction bar here. Parenthesis, we want to do L1, which were our observed, minus our expected, which were an L2, parenthesis. Scroll over to the denominator. Oh, no, we got a square. So we should put a square here. Then we want to divide by L2. And then close that off with a parenthesis. This is the command that will give you your chi-square test statistic. Sorry, your chi-square test statistic uh, pretty quickly. So it looks like we should get 12.017, which means I am just a little bit off here, 12.017. So there you go. Check that off the list if this is one of the important things you want to do. That's how we find the chi-square test statistic using our TI-84. Next, uh, check the conditions. There are only two conditions to check. We talked about this yesterday. The first one is a random condition. Like always, we want to infuse this with context. So the M&Ms were chosen randomly. Next, we have large counts. And this guarantees that we can actually use the chi-square distribution. So large counts, we just have to make sure that all of the expected counts are greater than five. And as we can see, all the expected counts are greater than five. On the AP test, or in, when you're writing this down, I would definitely leave something like see list above. So it would be obvious where to look to 
verify visually that all of the expected counts are greater than five. Okay, next for this test, the degree of freedom is n minus one. We talked about that. Six M and M categories minus one is a DF of five. Next, the test statistic, we already calculated that. 12.017. And finally, the p-value. The p-value is a probability that a chi-square is greater than the test statistic. In this example, that means the probability that chi-square is greater than 12.017. Remember, the chi-square test statistic is always a greater than. Next, you grab your calculator and you look for the chi-square CDF function. You can see it at the bottom here, it's number eight. So I'm gonna click number eight. Lower is always your test statistic, and our test statistic is 12.017. Leave upper at 1E99, that's the biggest number your calculator knows. DF is six minus one, which of course you could put the five there, but you know how I do things. Paste. And this will give us our p-value, 0 0.0346. And then now all that we need to do is make a conclusion. Let's go ahead and make our conclusion. This is our set phrase for every hypothesis test. We know that the p-value was less than alpha. And that is to say 3.4% is less than 5%. The data supports H alternative in context. And that would be that the distribution of M&Ms is different than hypothesized. So now that we've done that, um, our next idea is number five. Since we rejected the null hypothesis, we, we supported the alternative hypothesis, we need to say, which M&M color had an observed value farthest away from expected? And this is kind of a tricky question because we're not actually looking at the observed and expected. What we're gonna be looking at is what we call the chi-square contributions. This means what were the values of the observed minus expected squared for each category? And we can get that list really quickly with our calculator. Over here, we're gonna go and we're going to take a look at the list of L1 minus L2 squared over L2. L1 minus L2 squared over L2, that's gonna give me a list of values. And if I wanna look at them, I could either push enter now, or I could store that in another list. I'm gonna store that in L3 so I can look at this list on my own. So L3, here's the list. You can see why I did that. It's hard to read that list. Much easier if I just do stat edit and look at the list here. And what we're looking for here is the biggest value of L3. And it looks like the biggest value of L3 is this one right here, 8.33. That corresponds with the second category. So back to our worksheet. The second category was yellow. So the yellow M&M. The yellow category contributed the most to the chi-square test statistic. Therefore, it is one that is furthest away from the expected value. So next, we have the whole sheet that helps us do the four-step process. So let's put all of these pieces together. Hypotheses, either the hypothesized or the distribution of M&M &M colors are as stated above, or the distribution of M&M &M colors are not as stated above. Our significance level, alpha, is equal to 5%. The name of the procedure is a chi-square test for goodness of fit. The next is those two conditions. The two conditions for every chi-square test are random and large counts. We would say that the M&Ms came from a random selection. And then we would say that all observed counts are greater than five. See the table above. Next would be a picture, the picture of a general chi-square distribution. 
I would encourage you to draw a chi-square distribution that kind of looks like this, uh, right skewed distribution. Let's get to our specific formula. Specifically, chi-square is equal to sigma O minus E squared over E. For the work, we're going to fill in that formula. Now that looks like a very long formula to write. Remember that you would only ever really have to write out this formula on a free response test. And if there is a free response test, I guarantee you it's not going to have more than six categories. So this is a lot of categories for a free response test. Let's continue. Our test statistic, we already got that. That is 12.017. The test statistic is a chi-square value, so you are justified in writing chi-squared equals 12.017. Make sure you write down the degree of freedom. And of course, we already calculated that value for the p-value to be 0 0.0346. Now, for your curve, you're going to want to notate it a bit. And it doesn't particularly matter where you notate this. I see that this is an area of 3%. So I'm guessing we're going to put it somewhere on the right side here. Let's put a line. There we go. We'll call that 12.017. And then we'll shade to the right of that. I want to emphasize to you again that it doesn't particularly matter where on that curve you put that 12.017. As long as you make sure that that area, 0 0.0346, looks like an area of 0 0.0346 or an area of 3%. All right, our picture is finished. Now we just got to get to our conclusion, which we already wrote out. Since the p-value is less than alpha, 3.4% is less than 5%, the data supports the distribution of M&Ms is different than hypothesized. And lastly here for this part, for this, calcula for this uh, statistics trainer, is what parts of the four-step process are missing in this test. Well, we're missing the parameter. We're also missing a general formula. And we're missing the statistic. So those three things don't appear like they normally would in a four-step process. Which brings us to our important ideas. So here we go. Uh, conditions are the first part here. We are conditions. There are only two conditions for a chi-square goodness of fit, or any chi-square test. The has to be come from a random sample or a random assignment. And we have to have large counts, meaning all the expected values must be greater than or equal to five. Next learning target is the chi-square distribution itself. So the chi-square distribution curve is always right skewed, starts at zero. And you're always finding an area that's greater than the test statistic. The four steps in the four-step process are the same state, plan, do, conclude. And if you do get significant values, it's a good idea to discuss which values or which categories were the largest contributor to chi-square. So we did all of that in our uh, process. So I think we're ready to go to check your understanding. Does the warm, sunny weather in Arizona affect the driver's car, uh, the driver's choice in car color? Cass thinks that Arizona drivers might opt for a lighter color, with the hopes that it will reflect some of the heat from the sun. To see if the distribution of car colors in Oro Valley near Tucson is different from the distribution of car colors across North America. She selected a random sample of 300 cars in Oro Valley, and the data, the table shows the distribution of car colors in Cass's sample in Oro Valley, and the distribution of car color in North America, according to ppg.com. So do these data provide convincing evidence that the distribution of car color in Oro Valley differs from the North American distribution? So here we have another 
format of state plan do and conclude. We're going to start with a hypothesis. Here, we're saying that the distribution of car colors in Oro Valley is the same as the distribution for North America. Alternatively, we're going to say that the distribution of car colors in Oro Valley is different than North America. Now, I'm reading through the problem again. I don't see a value associated for alpha, so we're just going to use alpha is equal to 5%. Let's get to our check conditions part. Oh, sorry, the name of the procedure, we got to do that first. It's the chi-square test for goodness of fit. The two conditions are random and large counts. Like always, we're going to quote part of the question, and it says in the question, the sample is a random sample of 300 cars. For large counts, we're going to need our distribution of um, expected values. So let's grab our calculator. We're going to clear off the lists next. And then we're going to put in our uh, observed car colors. And then we're going to do our observed values the exact same way that we did before. Our sample size is 300. And then we're going to multiply by the, dis the distribution. So we're going to put braces, second parenthesis. And then we're going to go ahead and put in all of those uh, percentages as decimals, of course. Type in those percentages, put an end brace, push enter, and that gives us our expected counts. Taking a look at the expected counts, everything seems to be okay here. So let's get to the home screen. And let's get our expected counts. Oh, we needed to check the, the expected counts. Were there any expected counts that are less than five? No, all the expected counts are greater than five. And let's copy them down. And then we can type in all expected counts are greater than five. See the list. Then we get to the do part. So our do part specific formula work. Now certainly that's a very long formula to write down. Definitely more than I would expect you to write, of course. Our next job is to get a test statistic. So we're going to do this on our calculator. Let's grab our calculator and go to the home screen. Luckily for us, we have that calculation already here. So we'll just copy and paste that over. And that gives us 29.921 for our chi-square test statistic. While we're here, we might as well calculate our p-value. So we're going to go ahead and grab our p-value calculator, or the uh, same uh, formula from our calculator. And we'll just type in our chi-square test statistic, that is 921. And we had eight car colors, so our degree of freedom is going to be 8 minus 1. Now, 29.9 is a pretty big number. So we would expect a very small value for our chi-square test statistic. Let's see if that's true. Oh yeah, that's zero. Uh, anything above e to the negative four, e to the negative five on up, that's going to be a zero. So we've got a zero p-value. Writing this up, we have that the chi-square test statistic is 29.921, and our p-value is zero. The last thing we need here is the picture. We'll draw a small one in there. And we'll indicate just the very end of the curve that chi-square is equal to 29.921. So conclusion, here we have a p-value that is less than alpha. So the data is going to support that. And I think I remember what the alternative hypothesis is, is that the color distribution in Oro Valley is different than North America. Okay, 
So is there convincing evidence of a difference in car color? Perform a follow-up analysis. Sorry, if there is convincing evidence, perform a follow-up analysis. So this follow-up analysis means let's look, take a look at our greatest contributors. And to do our greatest contributors, we'll go ahead and put that list of chi-square contributions in L3. Then we'll take a look and see which one of these are going to be the greatest contributor. So where's our biggest number? Oh, it's 15 right over here. If I remember correctly, that's the other category. And that's exactly what we would write for our follow-up analysis. The other category was the category that was the most different from the expected. So that's it, everyone. That's the end of our chi-square goodness of fit. You definitely need to practice this. Uh, just doing the three that we've done is probably not enough uh, practice for you. So uh, it's an easy test. Get used to it and learn to love it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.